Hello, my name is Tiffany Chang, and this is Conductor as CEO, where I share some of my ideas about leadership. I imagine a world where conductors make artistic organizations great, like CEOs make businesses great, first by being of service to its people. A couple of weeks ago, I spoke about the liabilities of charisma, and how strength of personality may lead to our doing things to please the leader. And to our making decisions through the lens of the leader's views of the world. Well, this poses a dilemma and a series of questions for leaders. Does that mean leaders should not demonstrate strength and vision and exercise their influence on their groups? How could leaders effectively help guide people toward their visions without imposing? How could their groups feel? Truly fulfilled by their work. What does it even mean to feel fulfilled? These questions continue, and they get harder and harder to answer. I have always struggled with confidence. Here's what usually goes on in my head, on and off the podium. I know we can all be more fulfilled in our work every day, and I know we can get there, but I don't know how. I've learned so much from people who have brilliant solutions and revolutionary ideas, but I don't know which ideas would work for which problems. I know the change I seek to make in the world, but it might take fifty failed attempts to implement those solutions. I won't know until I try which ones work, but trying means failing. Not knowing answers kills my confidence. It leads me to believe that wrong solutions make me a bad leader. Not having all the answers makes me a leader others don't deserve. It makes me believe that once people find out that I don't know everything, they will pass judgment and say that I don't belong. And on a rare occasion that I do feel confident about a decision. I become afraid that it is not warranted, and I'm missing something. I would fear being too confident, so I could never win. I'm sure that this is a result of my personal experiences, but it is also the result of living in a world that indoctrinates these ideas in us on a daily basis. However. There is perhaps another way to unpack my battle with confidence, with what Adam Grant calls confident humility. Grant describes confident humility as having confidence in skills and ability to reach goals, plus the humility in the tools and processes to get there. As leaders, we can and should. Have confidence in our skills and clarity of vision. Without those, we won't know where we're going nor seek to gain the tools to get there. At the same time, we can and should admit that we don't have all the answers. We all have blind spots that blur our view of the world. With the help of others or your group, we can seek to find the best solutions together. So it pays off to show humility in not knowing the processes, and questioning the path in reaching a goal. Confidence and humility are therefore not mutually exclusive. You don't need to pick one or the other. Leaders that demonstrate confident humility do the following things. Number one. They normalize the humanity in all of us. We all make mistakes. We don't know everything. Nobody does. Confident humility encourages the people to recognize and reveal the humanity in themselves, instead of hiding behind confidence and the need to only supply the right answers. Without that fear of being wrong, imagine the risks we. Be willing to take, and the growth we'd be able to accomplish, both personally and in the service of the group. 
leaders who practice confident humility also empower the group to openly contribute to problem solving that help make the journey toward the vision more efficient. If everyone sitting in the rehearsal knows what the problem is and the conductor simply missed it, why is it the norm that we either secretly fix it ourselves and then shame the conductor for not having noticed it? We assume that the conductor should know everything. And because they didn't notice something, we conclude that they are deficient in some way. Since the conductor is incompetent, it is up to us to do their job. While this kind of commentary may be accurate and shows that the conductor needs to improve, it also fosters judgment that brews fear. Fear of doing something wrong and a mindset that supports hiding for not being good enough. It results in us versus them and a lack of camaraderie, trust, and psychological safety. If we were saying things behind someone else's back, which people are saying things about us behind our backs? In addition, there's a lack of us accomplishing something together, but rather you are responsible for this and I'm responsible for that. What if when the connector struggles with finding a solution, the group quickly and openly offers the solutions that they see? The conductor can recognize those who offer the solutions and say thank you. And we fix it and move on. Sometimes the conductor has the solution and other times the group has a better solution. At the end of the day, what are we trying to accomplish? A common goal. So we can all have the confidence in our ability to work towards the same goal. And we are all responsible for getting there in the quickest and the most effective way. We can also have the humility to seek and ask help from others on the team openly. In the process of having both confidence and humility, we start to dismantle the us and them. When we think about what we want in our leaders, we often think about someone with an abundance of expertise who provides solutions to all of our problems and someone who is confident. These leaders do make our lives easier to some extent, but they also remove autonomy, complexity, and the relationship between effort and reward of problem solving in our work. These are three elements that lead ultimately to fulfillment according to Malcolm Gladwell and many others. When a leader practices confident humility, we are actually given the opportunity to one, regain the liberating autonomy to take action we believe in. Two, to confront the challenging complexity of problems and having to solve them. And three, to give true effort that leads to the satisfying rewards and thus fulfillment. Finally, Gladwell agrees with Grant by saying, what we think we need in a leader is their expertise, but in fact, we need a leader for their humility. I certainly can work harder to become more confident about not knowing all the answers and asking for help. If these ideas resonate with you, please consider signing up in the link below for an email with each new blog post sent directly to your inbox. Thank you and have a great day.